Find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash JuCowFTW. Check out our blog where you can listen and download our shows at JuCowFTW.blogspot.com. And find us on iTunes by simply searching for JuCow's Podcast Kingdom. And submit your questions to us at ask.fm backslash JuCow. We will answer them all each week on Undressed to Impress with a Girl. You were cute and popular. I was just a little nerd. Right about now you're making me feel perturbed. Samantha from Halloween 5. Yes. And from, well, not Samantha, but she was in Freddy's Nightmare as well, which is pretty cool, but good luck finding that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not hard to find. It's just you got to be willing to pay that much. It's hard to own. <laughs> yeah. It's hard um, to get. She, uh... Oh, God, I just completely lost my train of thought. I'll edit it out. I'll just cut it in. Cool. Well, well, I was going to talk about... Oh, I was talk, let's talk about how we met her. All right, hold on. Uh, we met her at Horror Hound in March, and we talked to her. Uh, we wanted her on our show, and uh, now all the planets have aligned because we finally got her on the show. And so she actually has her own convention she started. I think that was her first convention ever, right? Uh, Maybe so. I think she said that that was her first convention she'd ever done, and she really liked the atmosphere, so she wanted to create her own is, I think, the gist of what she's doing. But uh, uh, Horror Hound, yeah. Yeah, Horror Hound was her first, yeah. Yeah. And so she so. has her own convention uh, starting up that's uh, actually she invited us to, but we just, being that we're going back to Horror Hound around the same time uh, in September. But either way, so we get to hear about that. We get to hear about uh, her experiences in Halloween 5 and Freddy's Nightmares. And then she actually gives us the scoop, Stacy. It's the scoop. Yes, we actually have breaking news. Right. For the first time on uh, PsyCal. Jukal's moving on up. We getting we getting news, son. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so she gives us breaking news on an upcoming role she's taking with a TV show. She lets us know the name of the show and basically what the show's about. But uh, it's kind of, I guess, hush hush. And she actually asked the creator or director, I believe, uh, it, what she could say. And I think she may have told us more than she was supposed to. <laughs> yeah, which is totally okay with us. Yeah, that's cool. But, uh, I, I, I dig it. Honestly. I had a lot of fun talking with uh, with her, and I hope you guys enjoy the interview. So we're going to shut up and go ahead and let you listen in. So were you a horror fan growing up? I was. Um, uh, I was a horror fan at a very young age. Um, I had the opportunity to see the original Halloween when it came out, and um, you know I was hooked instantly. And um, yeah, my mom, uh, may she rest in peace. She's the one that that um that got me into all the horror. Oh wow! What kind of movies uh, did she get you into? Oh goodness! I mean, just anything that was thriller, blood, guts. Uh, <laughs> I mean, blood, guts. Um, I mean, I remember by the time I was like twelve or thirteen, I think I had seen Helter Skelter. Um, yeah, I always had this fascination for you know, horror and, um, and the genre as a whole, definitely. Well, I have to ask you about, it says on IMDb that you're an episode of Freddy's Nightmares. Right. And for me, finding, like, Freddy's Nightmares is such a hard thing. I know you can get the VHS and you can get, like, the bootleg <laughs> DVDs and all this stuff, but it's like, I want, like, a set of the whole entire series. Like, when are they going to do this? But uh, can you tell us more about the episode you were in? Uh, the episode I was in, it was called Love Stinks. And if I'm not mistaken, my head, I ended up decapitated and... My head was in a pot of boiling water on the stove. Oh. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, um, oh, what is the movie right now? Oh, the one with Glenn, uh, Fatal Attraction with the yeah. rabbit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that was my head at the end, so. 
Yeah, yeah. I wish we could find those. It's just they're so hard to find. I mean, right. you, can, you can get them on eBay and stuff, just people right. want so much for it. It's like, man. Well, they spent all that time bootlegging it, so they got to get some kind of money for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Did you get the chance to work with Robert England while you were working on Freddy's Nightmares? You know, I didn't um, know to that question, but I did get to chance. I, I did have the opportunity of uh, meeting him in passing, and um, Robert was very nice. Um, as a matter of fact, I am about to go to L.A., the last of October to a Scare Foundation charity fundraising event, and Robert will be honored with their um, Lifetime Humanitarian oh, wow. um, Award. So, or Humanitarian of the Year, whatever the award is. But yeah, so I'm going to get to hang out with him, and um, hopefully he'll remember me or not. <laughs> but after being with uh, Michael Myers, it'll it'll be good to um, you know kind of reconnect and hook up with old Freddie. We're really excited. We're getting to meet him. Uh, we're going to Horror Hound again in uh, September, so we'll get the chance to meet him. I know uh, we were trying to go to your convention as well, but it's just not in the cards for us this year. We'll have to try to go, and I appreciate you inviting us as well. Well, I tell you, it was a dream back in January to do this uh, festival because this is a filmmaker for filmmaker festival and a little bit of a con thrown into it. And it was a dream and we had a vision of it and how we wanted it all, you know, to play out back in January. But my God, I had no idea and neither did my business partner um the speed, the magnitude uh, that we would reach. I mean, we just, we really had no idea. And, you know, the, fir the first person I actually um, picked up and called or texted was Justin Beam, um, our wonderful voice of the franchise and who I am so dearly, dearly grateful to for bringing me back to the fans. And I texted him, I think, and I'm like, hey, dude, you want to come to a, a, a horror a horror film festival in Arkansas. He writes me back. He's like, sure. And then the next thing you know, I'm asking Stephen C. Miller, who, of course, um, his new one out, his new film out is um, Under the Bed. And, um, you know, he had out um, Silent Night last uh, yeah. last November, you know, with uh, Malcolm McDowell. And then it's like the list. I mean, it, it just became this natural energy that was surrounding us. And... Right now, you know, we have on um, on our guest list, you know, we do have Justin Beam, Tyler Maine. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, Tyler coming and being a part of this is, is, is just very huge and incredibly special to me. And he's bringing Compound Fracture with him. And, um, you know, and then Eileen Deeds. I mean, my God. Yeah, that's one I, I've i always wanted to meet. I'm super jealous that she's going to be there because she's one person that's on my list of somebody I have to meet is Eileen Dietz. Well, Stacey, uh, I will share this with you. Um, it is really funny. We had already um, started booking guests, and Eileen, bless her heart, she reached out to me via Facebook. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was like, I had to read it. I was already friends with her, but I had to read her private message like 50 times. <laughs> because I'm like, wait a minute, is this the real Eileen D? Exactly. <laughs> and she's contacting me? What? <laughs> you know, it, it was very... Um, so anyways, what I did, I'm like copying, my hands were shaking, and I got it to Justin, and I'm like, Justin, Justin, oh my God, look at my lean teeth, ah! you know, and it was like typical, you know, I mean, I was totally just honored, and and she's going to be here, and also along with her attendance, you know, and she's a wonderful speaker, uh, she will be speaking to um, the audience about, you know, her journey, and um, an ever challenging uh, career and you know she's been around decades and she is going to be the recipient of our lifetime um, achievement award oh wow that's that is really awesome I'd love to see that Ho hopefully you guys take video well take we are I mean and, and you will see it we've got fuzz on the lens those guys out of New York are coming in and we will be running cameras all I mean all the time. Um, I guarantee you cameras will be running at least 20 out of a 24-hour day, and then the guys are taking the footage back to New York, 
and um, we're going to have a documentary out of it. So that is awesome. I will definitely be watching that. But Stacey, just, I mean, just because, I mean, I know that so many people just really adore her, but I am so honored and to say that she is such a sweetheart. I love the woman dearly, and she's as kind as she is talented. Yeah, I've never heard anything bad said about her whatsoever, which, you know, as a fan, makes you want to meet her more. So, yeah, congrats. yeah. so that's awesome. I'm so glad you guys are doing that. And then also she has her book out on um, exercising my demons. Um, so, and I hear the book is a wonderful read. In fact, I think she has one on its way to myself right now. And I, I can't wait to have time to sit down and read it. But um, <laughs> yeah. that's, yeah. Um, but anyways, in addition to Eileen, you know, we have Eric Fox, who is on this year's um, Face Off. Um, Eric Fox will be here. I mean, his special effects makeup is just incredible um goodness patrick ray uh he directed nail biter i'm a big fan of his patrick is coming in arkansas boy from right here in my home state eric england is coming in and bringing his new film um contracted uh the list just goes on and on and on i mean we have leslie donaldson uh, Tim Welch, Alan Roe Kelly, Bart Mastronardi, who teaches cinematography at the New York Film Academy. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Uh, and Jeff Burr. Yeah, let's not leave um, uh, Jeff Burr out. I mean, my God, his credentials are, they go on and on and on. And he, he directed um, uh, Leatherface, Tex uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so... The, the recent one. Third one. The third one? Was it? Yeah. Oh, the third one. Yeah. yeah, it was the third yeah. one. Yeah. I was yeah. trying to figure out which one it was. I, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the third one that came out. Uh, did that come out in the late 80s or early 90s? Yeah, I think it was late 80s because early 90s was uh, New Generation. Yeah, okay. it was late 80s. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, getting, um, getting back to Halloween 5, um. I know you uh, You said that you were a fan of the franchise before you got the role of Samantha in Halloween 5. What was your, your favorite of the series besides number 5? Uh, even after 5, if you have a favorite. I would have to say the original. The original. I think that's everyone's favorite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Has it has to be. to be. I mean, that's the birth. <laughs> that's the birth. But I specifically remember growing up and seeing it was 4 and 5 together because Danielle Harris was in both of those. And I remember being so scared because there was one scene that just scared the hell out of me for Halloween. And that was when she's climbing through like some kind of air conditioning unit. And he's at the bottom, like right, right. going after. And I'm like, as a little kid, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Being chased by a ghost. William Shatner is very frightening. <laughs> <It is>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I personally, I like, um, I mean, I've liked them all. Don't get me wrong, but the original is very special. And I do think, um, all the way out through the franchise, each and every one of them, their their writing team has been very savvy. And Michael's, you know, when he executes those kills, and Halloween being the franchise it is, the way I view it, it, it really sets itself apart from some of these other franchises that are out there. Um, you know, they haven't had to get too crazy, too off the wall with, I mean, Michael doesn't, you're not going to see Michael killing people as you've seen others just slash the crap out of people in some of these, you know, other franchises. And I'm trying to be very politically correct with my words because I don't want to say anything. But um, there is just a, that hint of mystery, his executions, and like I said, the writing has totally been superb. Um, you know, the, the gaffers, the way it's lit, you know, the cinematography on them. I mean, the barn scene in H5, um, you know, the cinematography, um, it was done beautifully. Yeah, I mean, I think Michael always has been kind of more methodical than right. Jason's and Freddy's. Absolutely. And, I, think, right. I mean, if we think of Freddy, and 
I love I love all the Nightmare on Elm Streets, but eventually he got like this goofy. Eventually, just right. got goofy. Yeah, and exactly. it kind of got the same for Friday the Thirteenth, where they're just like they're in so Manhattan and off, they're in space and yeah, they're right, doing these right. off these wall kills and like all this stuff. It's like, uh, but Michael Myers has always been kind of like this, you know, just creepy being. That... Consistent. He's been consistently exactly. Creepy. exactly. Like I think consistency, right? You I, I, exactly, Kyle. I mean, that was um, a word I've used about a million times. The consistency is what has kept the franchise going and kept him alive for so many years. I mean, my God, this is the thirty fifth. A year. I mean, yeah. hello. I mean, that's a long time. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, do you remember auditioning for the role of Samantha for Halloween 5? I do. I went in. Um, it was early on in the week, probably like on a Tuesday. And I, um, I got the call, number one, that I had an audition and I was just jumping up and down. I'm like, oh, my God, this is like the coolest thing ever because I was already this huge fan. And um, it seems like I went in on a Tuesday to audition and the casting director was getting ready like the end of the day after she put everyone on tape. She was going to, you know, get the tape to um, I think Dominique um, was already in uh, Salt Lake City. And um, the tape went out, and the next day I flew to Miami to go do an episode of Miami Vice. And um, actually, while I was in Miami, I got the phone call from my agent that I had booked Halloween 5. So, um, yeah, and all I could think about while I was trying to finish up Miami Vice was, please let this hurry and be over because I'm ready to go to Halloween. <laughs> did, you wanna, did you wanna be one of the death scenes, or did you wanna be the main role? Because I think, to me, if I was in a horror movie, I'd want to be like the most brutal death in the movie, just because I want to be covered in blood and weird. And... <laughs> I was so, I was, all, I mean, and so many people have asked me if I would go back and change my death scene, would I? And I'm like, oh hell no! The way I died, it was epic. <laughs> and it's the perfect segue to the next question I have too. Is you were talking about the cinematography in the in the barn scene as well. Um, in a lot of horror movies, especially in the in the early '90s, late '80s, the MPA was the MPAA was becoming a big factor in what you could see on the on the big screen. Um, was was the uh, the sickle death uh, your sickle death? Was there more to it, or was it intentionally a cutaway? Was there like an MPA thing where like you got to take some of that out, or was it no. intentionally a cutaway? Yeah, it was an intentional um, cutaway, definitely. Another reason why I love Michael Myers because he puts more to the imagination. Right. The Halloween films. <laughs> and also, um, which, <laughs> excuse me, um, also, the script read a little different in um, Samantha's death scene. And, you know, we had seen her be so sweet and, you know, her circuits were on hold. And, you know, Tina was definitely the more overbearing, um, you know, personality, I mean, hands down, than Samantha was. And... The way it read in the original script, I mean, Sammy just died, like, instantaneously after Spitz. And I remember going to Dominique, and I'm like, okay, can we please, like, this, we've seen her this way up until now. Can we see that, like, Sammy's got a set of, like, kahunas on her and that she can, like, <laughs> fight back? And we see that, you know, she she does have some strength and... Um, and so he went for it. He totally agreed, and that's um, how it all came out. So that's the story about that. Awesome. <laughs> it's beautiful, too. It worked out good. Um, Halloween is celebrating 35 years, which you said before, and it looks like you guys have a big convention coming up um, going on for the celebration. Are you excited to be reunited with some fellow cast members yet again? I am. It's just, you know, I, I had the um, the privilege to see Danielle back about six or seven years ago. And it just is amazing how everybody has grown up, like Danielle, Jeffrey Landman. Um, I am so excited to see everyone. I can't wait to see Wendy. I understand she has a family and... Um, I, I'm super excited to see Don Shanks, um, who played, as you guys know, Michael Myers in, in Five. Right. And um, 
I am just, it's going to be amazing. I mean, there's going to be a lot of, you know, tearful um, kind of moments, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. And I'm, it's, I can't wait to meet more fans. Um, I tell you guys this right now, you know, the fans of the, the Halloween franchise are the most loyal, devoted, sweetest people I've ever met in my entire life. And I am just amazed and I just appreciate their support of the franchise and myself more and more every day. I mean, these people are incredible. And you spoke of uh, Daniel Harris. What was it like working with a very young Daniel Harris and, and Donald Pleasance? It was awesome, and it's funny because I I had I didn't have scenes with either one of them. Right. <laughs> um, but being on set with Donald, I would see him in passing. He was always, you know, he was the kind that could definitely command a room. That's a given. Um, Danielle was a very old soul. I mean, there was something incredibly special about her at such a young, beautiful age. She was very intelligent. Um, she was wonderful, but yet she was still a kid. Right. You know. And she's become, I, to me, a, a, a pretty great actress. I mean, I love the Hatchet films. And uh, I think that Hatchet is definitely an homage to maybe not necessarily the Halloween franchise, more so the Friday the 13th franchise, but it's kind of an homage to just 80s horror. And I think right, Halloween right. definitely falls, falls into that category. Well, exactly. And I tell you, I wish today... Um, I am a big fan of 80s horror, and somewhere along the way, um, in the shuffle, you know, a lot of that has been lost, and I hope that with technology today, with um, the transition to digital cin cinema from film, um, I hope some of these filmmakers can get out there with all the wonderful, beautiful talent they have and start to bring some of that 80s style um, back for all of us. I mean, I really do. I, I do as well. I think, oh, the yeah, 70s, I think the 70s is definitely coming back with movies that James Wan's doing. Um, right. But I think the 80s is being revived as well. With like, There's movies now that they're pitching that there's no CGI, which is perfect. I mean, that's right. what a oh, movie yeah. should be. And I think that's, that's a very 80s thing. And I think that if that's coming back, I don't think movies are dead yet. <laughs> exactly. Well, I don't either, and like I said, it's um, it's certainly refreshing. Um, there was just something about the '80s, you know, that whole era that was was so cool with me. Whether it was film, music, um, it was just a really cool time. <laughs> I agree. I'm a huge '80s music fan. I admit it. Totally love all the cheesy '80s songs. So, and I love all the '80s horror. And it was like right between the '80s is like early '90s. You started to see them throw in more computer work, and '90s right, right. CGI is really rough. Like it's really hard to look at. Yeah. But I'm I'd much rather see practical effects and you know right. and, and look bad than them just throwing it in a computer right and even you know I, I'd much rather see I mean Michael is just one of these characters you know I can't see Michael going after you know with a with a weed eater or yeah you know the lawn mower or the the big old tractor for that <laughs> <laughs> even a practical um everyday tool around the house I'd still but yeah so I think we're headed back in a um I think there's so much talent out there right now, and that's one thing that has thrilled me about uh, being the hostess and co-director of the festival that's coming up. This being our first year, we have had over 400 submissions internationally. Wow. And uh, yes, from Iran, Turkey, Belgium, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And to see what these uh, young filmmakers are doing, um, Watch out, gang, because, you know, they're they're coming back strong. Yeah. I mean, they really are. Their effects, the storylines, um, the originality. Um, and it's, it's great that, you know, going back to 1978, that Halloween um, has allowed those films from the 80s, has allowed these guys to... Um, to become, you know, horror and, and genre filmmakers. 
um, you know, Halloween was their inspiration. And yeah. it, it's just nice to see where, where they've taken their careers and, um, and their love for filmmaking and their passion. And, um, you know, I, I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate for indie filmmaking. Oh, absolutely. It seems, it seems like indie's where it's at as well. Definitely. That's, that's the way I feel. A lot of these big budget Hollywood films, the, I mean, I did see The Conjuring, I liked it, but that's, it's almost rare for me to like. Yeah, it's, something it's, that's it's huge. One right in a hundred movies are yeah. good with big budget. The indie films are the best. I mean, the ones that are under the radar, they get like a cult following, are always the best. Which right. is, I mean, a little. Yeah, I mean, I think every every franchise has probably had those under the radar movies. Definitely. But, um, but I I noticed, and I think it was actually today that I noticed. Uh, you you put online that you were in talks to to possibly be on a TV show. Is that still kind of hush hush, or can you talk about that a little bit? Um. I knew I had this interview with you guys coming up, and I did ask. Um, <laughs> I did ask if I could uh, say anything at all, and the director was very kind, and he said, "Go ahead, I can say a little." So awesome! awesome. Yes, <laughs> exclusive. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, you guys are actually getting the first. Yeah, I mean, other than what you've read on Facebook, um, yeah. absolutely, I was. Um, and if you hear my dog in the background, he likes to moan occasionally and like talk to me. So <laughs> he's thinking, no, his name is Bentley. He's the greatest dog in the world. I don't mean to like throw us off topic here, but um, he doesn't. I've got my earbuds in, and he doesn't. He's looking at me like, Mom, <laughs> what, yeah. what the hell are you talking to? Are you talking to me? <laughs> this is very confusing to him. <laughs> You've gone nuts. <laughs> but, Anyways, um, I was contacted by a director. I will keep his name private. Right. And um, he did say, I have a couple of projects that I think you would be great for. And I would love to work with you. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you get that a lot. And you don't know who's, who's the real deal. And right now, you try and weed out that this from the that and I'm not I mean I do appreciate you know people offering me scripts and stuff but um this is a this is a go it's um the name of it is um of dark and disturbing things um I love the name of it of dark and disturbing yes I'm intrigued you must tell me more <laughs> of dark and, disturbing things. and basically it's a mix between a like a true blood meets Twin Peaks. Oh, wow. Oh. That's yeah. amazing. And so it's right up my alley. Um, <laughs> and um, that right now, that's really kind of all I can say. Right. I, am in, I am in close touch um, with the director, who is also the writer, almost daily or every other day. Um, with this festival going on, I tell you, it's um, I, I want to jump up and scream because <laughs> because my dream has been, you know, to um, to get on a series and to do one good solid film a year. Definitely, I mean, I'm, I mean, congratulations! It's awesome, awesome news. Right. We'll definitely be, you know, keep us up to date with it so we can keep everybody in the podcast that listens to our podcast to you know check it out and everything. And once it comes out and you're able to talk more, you're more than welcome to come back on and discuss it more. So, because I, I know, I know that's a big event too, especially for TV. You're right? you're going to be on TV. You know, what, is it going to be once a week? I would assume. Uh yes, it will be episodic. Awesome. Yes, and I just something else that's so cool. I mean, you know, Walking Dead has given so many opportunities um, for so so many other shows to. Um, to come on board and whether it be zombie or, you know, monster or whatever, but, um, I'm, I'm not trying to say too much, but, um, no, and, this, yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I'm just trying to get the word out and still not get in trouble for saying anything, but, um, I am super elated. I wish, um, I'm just, I'm ready to, I'm ready to start work on it tomorrow. Um, I've got the festival coming up September the 26th through the 29th. Um, we are going to be having a 
Halloween five screening at my festival, the Hot Springs Horror Film Festival. And immediately after the screening, we'll follow an up close and personal Q and A with Justin Beam and myself. Oh, awesome! Nice, nice. Yeah, yes. <laughs> all the women. There's going to be like no men there whatsoever. All the girls have like I know why they're there. They're there to see Justin. So. <laughs> Every time I post something about him or whatever, I mean, it's like I should be his fan club, like, go-to. I get so many <laughs> inbox messages. Oh, my God, he's so cute. It's either Justin or Sean Clark. And I'm like, don't, don't tell those guys. Don't be burning up my face. <laughs> Justin and, and Sean Clark. And everybody's like, oh, it's Sean Clark. Look at him. That's sweet. I'm like, oh. Uh, it's Sean Clark has a huge following. He I, does. I'm, I'm I know just that. like, really, really, man, that's awesome. <laughs> I know he does, and it's just comical, and I haven't even conveyed to him yet that I know how many women who are madly in love with him, because they tell me. Yeah, I mean, he gets people send him gifts all the time, and he posts them on Facebook, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> like, this yes. is serious. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sean Clark, I mean, one day, it was pretty recent, there was one pic on Facebook with he and Norman, and, um, you know, I sent him a private message, I'm like, dude, in my next life, I am so coming back as you! (laughs) (laughs) I think think it was last year, um, whenever it was, yes, he posted those uh, birthday pics. I have never seen so many presents in yeah. my it's like and I mean this is an exaggeration don't get me wrong but it's like an 18 wheeler was just <laughs> packed down know. like full of stuff and everybody is so sweet to support him and love him you know the way they do I mean it's just um and and he's He's such a sweetheart too. He's such he a is. guy. So he deserves it one hundred percent. But I'm just I'm just like people are crazy about him. <laughs> like yeah. I never would have thought that. Honestly, I don't know why, but he deserves it. He's a great writer. He does all kinds of good stuff. He does, and I tell you what, um, you know, Horror Hound, the one where you where we all met, um, you know, back in March, that was my first um con ever. And I still am speechless over that many people because I think there were 20,000 or a little over 20,000, if I'm not mistaken. It was that, many, people. Yeah. that many people under that one roof yeah, it was in, mad. in this genre. Uh, alcohol was being served. Oh, we know. We, <laughs> yeah, I think we, know. We, we were running a booth and we were... Uh... We were a little more than inebriated pretty much the entire weekend. Yeah, I was wondering where my money went. I was like, I bought nothing back from this convention. Like, <laughs> just where beer. did all my money go? <laughs> oh, booze. That's just a bigger went. belly we brought back. <laughs> but it was, it was, and there I'm, you guys are having a good time, I, I see now. But I mean, I'm, I'm standing, I mean, I'm sitting behind my little table, you know, and everybody's coming up and the fans were so nice and so just. Oh, my God, the fans really touched me. But everybody was just so loyal to the genre. And yep. and there was not, like, one bad thing I heard of that, like, happened there. And everybody was just peace, love, you know, and just everybody was so laid back and so cool. I will just never forget that. And Sean and Nathan Hanneman did one just outstanding job i mean that's the best uh, that's the best of the best for me and um you know i i sent him a message shortly after it was over and i said sean wow i am so impressed and thank you yeah it's it cannot be easy you know there are so many people and I mean, I know it was busy, it was packed and everything, but, you know, there's only so many people running it, and everybody, you know, just gets along and everything. Like, to me, it seemed like everything just went fine. And I've been to conventions where everything goes completely wrong. Right. So, (laughs) Uh, Florida House is always well managed. Exactly. I mean, it seemed like everything, I mean, to me, from just my point of view, I mean, everything was great, everyone was happy. Um, now there were, you know, it was like 
to me, seeing some of the the way people were dressed, um, kind of, I did a double take a few times. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just a great, great, great time. Kudos to those guys and and to Justin Beam, too, for all of his um, dedication and um, hard work to um, the Halloween franchise and, you know, Fangoria as well. So since you, since you, you know, have gone to the convention and everything, it was something you really enjoyed. Can we see you back at more? I mean, obviously you got some lined up, but is that something you want to continually do all the time? I would like to do, honestly, um, I would like to do two, maybe three a year. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, that's. Sounds... I would. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to get burnt out really fast. That's... Exactly, and I... trust me, there are bad cons out there. I won't. I'm not right. going to say anything bad about anybody, but you know, right. there are times that you go and it's just hell. Like, well, that, it's... and also we go to cons a lot, and I, there's there's always like, and just to say like, I can kind of tell like Tom Savini, for instance, he goes to every con he can think of. And right. I, you can kind of tell, I mean, I would be burned out a little bit, too, if I went to cons every damn weekend. So I, oh, yeah. you can always kind of tell the, the guys who are, they, they need a break. Like, they deserve a break from all that. Right. And um, so I, it's it's smart to just do a couple a year. That's what we're going to try to do, too. Like we, we love running a booth, but it's exhausting. It is. It's a lot of work. It really is. But honestly, meeting other, you know, horror movie fans and just getting to talk right. to them for a little bit is so rewarding at the same time. And you make you make so many new friends, too. And it's it's a lot of fun, but it is a lot of work. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I just I want the fans to um, my goal right now is to be very smart. And because, um, like I said, Justin Beam is the one that rebooted my on camera career. I mean, I've been behind the camera for all these years, but Justin is the one that um, gave the fans and I back to each other last um, August 27th. And I feel like this is my second time around and not that anything bad happened with the first time, but I had to come back to Arkansas to take care of um, family. And I feel like this time... I want to be as smart as I can and making the right decisions. And, you know, over the years as we mature, you know, I'm only as good as those that I surround myself with. And I am being very, very careful about who I surround myself with, from my personal assistant to my my immediate team. Um, I'm just, um, I'm in it. And I'm going to work hard, and it's not about how many conventions I do a year, you know, or how many films. If I only do one film every two years or three years, and and it deli I deliver, you know, a solid performance, um, or with this series, you know, that's, that's what I want. And that's the smartest thing you can do, too. Yeah, absolutely. I have to agree with that. Um, so when we end the show... We ask, it's kind of like a speed round, we call it the Psycal 8, and it's just basically eight questions about horror movies in general. So if you don't have an answer, it's not a big deal. But the first question is, what do you think is the scariest movie of all time? Oh, the scariest movie of all time. Um, it would have to be Helter Skelter. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. no one's ever said that one before. Yeah. What, what scared you, just the reality of that movie? Oh my god, yeah, and when they were writing pig and everything on the wall and blood with your fingers gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the best movie you've seen in the in the last five years? Oh, um, 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 um it was oh <laughs> the one that was the remake. I know I oh my god, it was the one about the remake about the tsunami. <laughs> that one. Oh, that, the, um, uh, what was that? Yes, that's it. Come on, Kyle. With uh, you and McGregor. Yes. Yeah, I, I know exactly. I just watched it a couple months ago. The you tsunami know, movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it had uh, Naomi. Uh, yes. And yes. Uh, what was that movie? Is called? it called The Impossible? Yeah, The Impossible. Yes, that's it. Yes. <laughs> Team guys, teamwork. That was a high five. That is a good movie. You know. <laughs> yes. A really good movie. yes. Very Sorry, intense. Yes. Uh, what's the what's your favorite movie that you've worked on so far? Oh, I would have to say this this 
thing called uh, Halloween Fly. I think that's a give me. <laughs> uh, what's the worst horror movie monster of all time? Oh, I can't say that. Next. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I still have to be playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, next. What's, uh, what's your cheesy guilty pleasure movie outside of horror? Outside of horror. Comedy. Comedies. Comedies. Is there one in particular that you really like? <laughs> uh, my dog just answered that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> say Turner and Hooch. I was going to say, did he say Turner and Hooch? No, he was going to say Marley and me. He's a, <laughs> okay. he's a big, he's a big um, like 125 pound golden retriever. Um, I'm a huge, huge, huge Adam Sandler fan. Nice. Um, right. And I just saw at Growing Ups 2 with my son and actually I like two better than one, which is unusual. <laughs> <laughs> what is a... What's something that you've learned from horror movies not to do in, like, everyday life? Not to do in everyday life? Like, I refuse to go camping because of all the, the things that happen when kids go camping. <laughs> Dude, I've died. <laughs> <laughs> do you stay away from barns and sickles? <laughs> well, and two, that's the other thing about a barn. I mean, I, was, I grew up in Arkansas on a farm, and there were barns and cows and... None of that, none of that scared me. <laughs> it takes a lot to scare. I mean, um, there's really, the only thing I've learned, okay, I, from watching horror movies, um, okay, get this, you guys, uh, do not go to the gas station at night and do not go to an ATM machine. Have you uh, seen the ATM? Do what now? Have you seen the movie ATM? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that movie freaks me out. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it freaks me out too. <laughs> Honestly, I've never even seen an ATM in a glass case, but I will avoid them at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> and I normally, try to yeah. Too. yeah, I mean, I avoid. I really don't go out at night that much, but if I'm out, I've got people with me. But yeah, just going to the gas station that that freaks me out. Like if I had to do it. Yeah, that and getting money. Yeah. See, males can probably get out of this easier because if I drop my pants, no one's going to try to hurt me. Like, they just run. But, like, females, that's not a good thing to do. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's just creepy when I do it. <laughs> they don't want to mess with me anymore. <laughs> they would run. Yes, exactly. oh, yes what everyone this, would. What is this guy doing? What is he no. doing? I'm not going to kill him now. He's creepy. Wait, I'll just wait for the next person. get the air pump after you, the tire pump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what's your favorite decade for horror movies? Eighties. Yeah, I, yep. I figured you kind of answered that one. Yeah. Uh, and the last question we have for you is, um, uh, what's your favorite line you've ever said in one of your movies? You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect way awesome. to end the show. Just end the show right there. Just I'm gonna get... uh, end it with you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. And believe me, you guys, I've said it many times after I said it. <laughs> I mean, five. <laughs> End of story. You're the king of the neighborhood. I'm ugly and misunderstood. I got something to say, so I'll make it fly.